Hi and welcome to another episode of PeaceMeg TV. In today's video tutorial for Lightroom, I'm going to take you through and show you how you can create a retro black and white effect using this photograph as an example. And as always, I'm also going to make a free preset available that will be linked in the description below and also available on the website. Okay, so creating a retro black and white photograph effect is fairly straightforward in Lightroom. All we're going to do is we're going to take the blacks, we're going to make those a little bit lighter, and we're going to take the highlights and the light areas and make those slightly grey, and that's going to be our starting point. So to do that, we're just going to come to the Develop module, we're going to select black and white to convert the image over. We're going to take the contrast first of all, we're just going to bump that up a little bit to get some nice definition between the highlights and the shadow areas in the image. Next thing we're going to do, we're going to come to the highlights, we're going to drop those down by about 15 to 20. Again, with all of these edits, they are based upon the image you're working with, so just use this as a ballpark. We're going to take the shadows, whites and blacks, and we reduce those down by about 10. So we take those to about minus 10 around that point. That'll do for me. So there's our starting point, but the most important aspect of this is where we go to the tone curve. And what we're going to do is we're going to take those blacks and we're going to reduce the entire black point down. Now to do that, you can see on the tone curve, we're in the normal point curve mode. If you're not in this mode, all you need to do is click on this little symbol on the right hand side. that will switch it between the two different modes. Then if we take a look at the graph, we've got all the shadow area down in the bottom left hand corner, all the highlight area in the top right hand corner. So at the moment, the blacks are in the black area, the whites are in the white area. So if we grab this first point and we just raise that up, you'll see that the blacks now start to become slightly flatter and more gray. We're going to do the same with the whites. We're going to come down and we're just going to just reduce those down ever so slightly just to flatten the image. We're now going to add a couple of extra points in there. So we're going to take the sort of mid gray areas and the highlight areas and we're just going to drop those down ever so slightly and boost those just a little bit. So if we turn that on and off, you can see the difference. We've got the image as it was and as it is now. So you can see it's just flattened the overall tonality of the image and that's a good starting point for working with this retro effect. So the next thing we want to do is we're going to come down to the effects section and with a lot of old cameras you kind of got a lot of vignetting around the edges so we're going to start off by doing a post crop vignette. So we're going to come up to the amount slider and we're going to reduce that down. You can kind of do this to taste to see exactly what the effect that you want is. But what it also does is it allows you to draw attention to the center or the focal point of the image. So I tend to use this quite a lot for various different reasons. So we'll leave it at that. And we'll also introduce a little bit more grain into this because being a retro kind of effect, you would have had a lot more grain in there. So let's just bump the grain up. And again, you can do this on a to taste sort of basis, whatever you think looks good on your image. And finally, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to the dehaze section. Now, dehaze by its very nature, if we start to increase that, will give us more contrast in the image and reduce that haziness. But if we take it to the left-hand side and give it a negative amount, it'll actually make the image look a little bit hazy. So you can see we kind of get that a little bit more of that softness to the image itself. So again, we can turn that on and off. So there's the before, there's the after. So you can see we've got quite a flat image now. So if you wanted to leave the effect there, you could, and that's giving us that retro look, but you could also go in and start giving this some tone if you'd like. So we can come to the split tone in section, and if we wanted to make this look a lot more sort of retro, where we wanted to ha add some sort of aging to the picture itself, we could easily take the hue for the highlights, take that into the sort of the orangey yellow kind of effects, and do the same for the shadows. We'll take that around the 35 to 40 mark, should be a good start. Then we can use the saturation sliders to introduce just a little bit of that, that coloration into it. So we don't want to make it sepia, we want to give it that sort of retro kind of feel. So only a small amount in the saturation on both of those. If we want to, we can easily adjust the balance between those. If we want to sort of give favor towards the highlights or the shadows, we can do that. So entirely up to you. And like I say, this is a completely to taste kind of effect. So if we take a look at it before, where we just got the black or white image and the after where we've got that slight sepia tint to it so we've got that nice little bit of coloration that adds that aged effect so that's really all there is to it it's quite a simple effect and like i say we've got the free preset in the description below you can download and install that into lightroom and then you can create this effect in one click well i hope you found this video useful if you did please give this a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button to be kept up to date with all the new content we add every single week 
If you do enjoy the tutorials we put out on this channel, please consider popping over to Amazon where you can purchase the new ebook we released on the Kindle store, 8 Essential Adobe Lightroom Techniques, where we go into detail about different techniques that every Adobe Lightroom user should really have in their arsenal. The link is in the description below and your support is much appreciated. Well, until next time, take care.